This is Calculus, Topic 1.1, Homework Section, Problems, 68, 69, 80, and 86. We want a line that's going to go through the points 1 3rd and negative 1, and it has to be parallel to 3x minus 4y equals 8. Well, being parallel simply means that it'll have the same slope. So to find the slope of this, we're going to solve for y. So 3x minus 4y equals 8. I will subtract 3x from both sides, so we'll end up with negative 4y equals negative 3x and a positive 8. Then I'm going to divide on both sides by negative 4. This will give me a y equals two negatives, gives me a positive 3 fourths, x, and this is a negative 2. So my slope is going to be a 3 fourths. Okay, now I have a point here, 1 third, negative 1, and a slope of 3 fourths. I'm going to use the point slope formula. To find the equ linear equation by putting the point and slope in here. So opposite of y will be a positive 1, slope will be a 3 fourths, and the opposite of x will be a negative 1 third. Now to distribute my 3 fourths, I'll get 3 fourths x, and 3 fourths times a 1 third will be 3 twelfths, which reduces down to negative 1 fourth. Now subtracting 1 from both sides, we'll get y equals 3 fourths x. I cannot add a negative 1 fourth and a negative 1 because the denominators, denominators are not the same. So I'll move my negative 1 fourth over and give this a denominator of 1 and then make that negative 4 over 4. And when we add them together now, we get negative 5 over 4. And that's our linear equation. But number 69, uh, we want a point that goes through 0 0.5 and 5 and parallel to 2x minus 2y equals 11. So once again, we're going to solve for y. Um, so 2x minus 2y equals 11. We'll move the 2x to the other side by subtracting 2x. So we'll get a negative 2x plus 11. Then we'll divide everything by that negative 2 here and that will isolate the y. So we'll get y equals negative divided by negative is positive 1x minus 11 over 2. So my slope is 1. So I have a point of 0 0.5, 5, slope of 1. Okay, and let's put all this into the point slope formula. The opposite of y will be a negative 5, slope is 1, and the opposite of x will be a negative 0.5. When I distribute my 1, this simply becomes x and a negative 0.5. I add 5 to both sides to isolate my y. This is equivalent of like putting $5 and then taking away 50 cents from it. I'll have four dollars and fifty cents left. So four point five. And this is my linear equation. Alright, next. Let's look at number eighty. Well, number eighty says a business buys three thousand nine hundred and fifty currents for five dollars each month, but only thirty seven hundred when the price is raised to ten dollars. Hmm. So they want a linear demand function for these curtains. So um, we have three ninety five items when the cost is five dollars. Oh, it can't be red. Okay. Okay. These are the items when the cost is five bucks. But it goes down to 370, the items, when the cost is 10 bucks. Okay, 
So we want a demand function. The output of a demand function, a linear demand function, the output of the demand function is going to be items. So that means when we create our points, the y part is going to be items. So it costs five dollars. The items will be thirty-nine fifty. If the cost is ten dollars as an input, the items will be three seven zero zero. Okay. And again, the reason why we knew that cost went here and items went here is because the demand function always gives answers that are items, which is an output. So we do output goes here. All right. So a slope. Slope will be made from three nine five zero minus three seven zero zero all over five minus ten. Okay, so this will be two five zero all over negative five and that gives me negative fifty. So that's my slope, negative fifty. And then we'll pull out the point slope formula. And our numbers that go in will be the opposite of y. Let's see, I'll put in this one right here, negative 3700. Zero, zero. The slope, which will be negative 50. And the opposite of x, which will be negative 10. OK, so this room, the left side remains y minus 3700. Zero, zero. When I distribute my negative 50, I'll get negative 50x and a positive 500. Then I'll add 3,700 to both sides. As a result, we'll get y equals negative 50x um, plus 4, 2, 0, 0. Now, this is generic using the x and y's from algebra. Since this is the demand function, I'm going to call this d. And since the price was the input, instead of using x, I'm going to use the letter p. And this is how we'll set up, or this is what we're given, um, or this is what we determine our demand function to be. Now next, we have a equal, we're looking for equilibrium price. It says that the demand for the college newspapers is um, 2,000 copies each week. That's if the paper is free. The demand drops down to about a thousand when they start charging ten cents for them. Now, the college will only supply um, 600 free copies, but it will supply 1,400 copies if they start selling them for 20 bucks. Now, the way that we find equilibrium price is setting demand equal to supply and then solving for price. So, first we'll look for demand function. Demand will be MP plus B and we know the output is items so we will have an input that's going to be um, money so we're told that um, 2,000 copies but they're free so it's zero which is free and then you will have a demand of 2,000 copies um, if they start charging 10 cents then your demand is down to about a thousand for the papers on college. Okay. Um, furthermore, let's see. From here we can get a slope that will be two thousand minus one thousand and zero minus point ten. Uh, this will be a one thousand over negative point ten, and I think that's going to be negative. 10,000 when that division is done. So that's my slope. Okay, so from here, let's raise it up a little bit. Um, y minus the opposite of, here it is right here, the other y, which is 2,000, will equal the slope negative 10,000 times x minus x which is 0 which gives me y minus 2,000 equals negative 10,000 x 0 just kind of goes away 
and I'm going to add 2,000 to both sides, so we'll get y equals negative 10,000x plus 2,000. So as a um, demand function, we can say demand equals negative 10,000 times price plus 2,000. Okay, now let's do the same thing for supply. Oops. Supply is going to be m times price plus b. And again, for supply, the output again is the number of items that you have. So, set up these as points. Okay, so price. So when the price is free, zero, the college will provide 600 papers or 600 items. When the cost goes up to 20 cents, we're getting paid for this, um, 1,400 will be supplied. Okay. So the slope for that will be, let's see, 600 minus 1400 and 0 minus 0.2. Okay, so what I'm getting for slope will be, let's see, that's a negative 800 all over negative 0.20. Uh, let's see if I move this over one time, I'll get um, 8,000 and then divide that by 2, 4,000. Okay. Alright, got my slope. And now we have y minus, um, let's see, 600 equals a slope of 4,000 times x minus 0. 4,000 times x is 4,000x. And let's see here. We're going to take this negative 600, put it on the other side. Sorry about the phone ringing. Okay. And so this will be our supply fund. So supply is 4,000 times x, or p, price plus 600. Okay, now to find the um, equilibrium price we must set the um, demand equal to the um, supply so this will be negative 10,000 P plus 2,000 equals 4,000 P plus 600. Okay, if I add the negative 10,000 to both sides I'll get 14,000 P. If I subtract 600 from both sides, I'll get 1,400. Divide both sides by 14,000. And I end up with 10 cents for the price. So this is the equilibrium price. 